So this week, you learned about anti-corruption layers and how it protects a downstream team from changes in the upstream team. But how and where should we implement this anti-corruption layer within an event-driven architecture involving event bridge and lambda? I mean, we could create this anti-corruption layer as code modules and use it to translate these external events into local ones. However, these implementations are language specific. And if we have functions that are written in different languages, then we will have to implement the same transformation logic multiple times. And it still doesn't help us with direct integrations if we ask EventBridge to send events directly to SNS or say step functions, for example, because we should use Lambda functions to transform data, not transport data. So if EventBridge is able to transport the data to where we need them to go without us having to write any custom code, then we should definitely do it. So instead, our anti-corruption layer needs to be outside of our event bridge functions. And the way that I like to implement this anti-corruption layer is to have another Lambda function process all the incoming events from the external model or boundary context and translate them into domain events for our current boundary context and publish those translated events to our local event bus and have all my subscribers subscribe to only the domain events that are internal to our boundary context. And this approach works for all subscribers, not just our Lambda functions, because we have the domain events in the event bus and we can route those events to SNS topics, SQS queues, step functions, and what have you. And if the upstream team was to introduce changes to the events that we receive, then the anti-corruption layer, namely this translation Lambda function, is the only one that needs to change because our coupling to the upstream system is reduced to this single layer in our event-driven architecture. And that is why we have these anti-corruption layers. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.